The Cincinnati Reds have won a game. I repeat, the Reds have won a game. This is not a drill. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds. Thanks so much for making Locked On Reds your first listen of the day. We are free and available everywhere you get your podcasts on all platforms. I'm your host, Stephen Offenbaker, and Jeff Carr is on an undisclosed beach somewhere on the eastern seaboard uh, enjoying some vacation time. So it's just going to be me and you today. Uh, I have been covering the Cincinnati Reds in podcast form for the last four seasons. Uh, I have a passion for baseball passion for the Cincinnati Reds, and I am turning that passion into information for you. On today's podcast, I'm going to review that Cardinal series that just wrapped up. And, you know, of course, it didn't really go the Reds way very much, but they did finally get a win, breaking that 11 game losing streak. In fact, it's their first win since their first series of the season in Atlanta. Uh, We're also going to check in and talk about that last start by Hunter Green and whether or not we should be worried about what we saw from him. Uh, We're also going to see about Nick Lodolo and the other young guns in the Reds rotation. And we're also going to talk a little bit more about what we can expect to be getting back in the form of injured players coming up over the next several days. But the first thing we're going to do is start right with uh, the win. Uh, Obviously, uh, historic 11-game losing streak, People were calling it the Castellini curse, uh, and I think probably that played a part in why the team performed exactly the way that it did. But they went out and they got a win Sunday against the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, It's always a good day when the Reds beat the Cardinals. Uh, They get their first win after losing 11 in a row. That was two losses to the Guardians, four losses to the Dodgers, three losses to the Padres, and two losses to the Cardinals before finally breaking the streak. Uh, in that game, uh, Mr. Nick Lodolo pitched 5.2 innings, going five and two-thirds, allowing just one earned run and seven Ks. And here's the important part. He walked nobody, zero bases on balls. Uh, that also, for those keeping track at home, was Nick Lodolo's first win as a Major League Baseball pitcher, his first red for his first win for the Reds. Now, Uh, That win-loss column statistic is uh, slowly but surely going by the wayside. side. But, you know, good on him getting his very first win of the season, very first win of his career. You know, I thought he looked good. He mixed up his pitches. He hung in there. Uh, He never really let the game get away from him. And I really am just impressed uh, by the fact that he didn't walk anybody in that game. You know, he, uh, he remained calm. He remained cool. He was really focused. He threw great pitches, seven strikeouts along the way. Uh, I really hope that this is the direction he continues to go. You know, each start that he has made has gotten progressively better than the last. You know, obviously that first time out I think nerves played a large part in what we saw from him I think that just the adrenaline and the emotion of making his major league debut got the best of him Uh, in his second start he looked better he did make some mistakes but he showed poise he showed grit he showed determination Uh, in that San Diego series you know Manny Machado got him good and he came right back at Manny in the next at bat and really was unfazed he was he was not scared and that's what you want to see in a starting pitcher to uh, a short memory to be able to forget the mistakes they made and move forward. Uh, after the five and two thirds innings from Nick Lodolo, uh, the Reds bullpen was actually lights out the rest of the way. Uh, they had three and a third scoreless innings uh, coming out of the bullpen. That was uh, Tony Santillan, Art Warren, and Lucas Sims combining for, uh, you know, the perfect uh, relief appearance outing, uh, 3.1 innings pitched. Uh, Lucas Sims gets his first save on the season. And, you know, Jeff and I talked about last week uh, when we knew Lucas was going to be coming back that it was my hope that the Reds eased him back into what they were going to do with him, keep him in medium leverage situations and really, uh, um, you know, make him not overtax his arm. His first time out didn't go great. It wasn't horrible. Uh, But, you know, this time out, Sims kind of looked like Sims, and and he managed to get the save. Uh, I'm kind of excited about that. This Reds bullpen really did need a boost. It really did need – 
some extra oomph on the back end. And I think this combination, these guys, Santion, Warren, Sims, you add in uh, Justin Wilson and Luis Sessa, that's a really great base, a really great combination of pitchers that you can rely on coming out of the pin. Everybody else uh, really has some question marks surrounding them and what it is that they bring uh, at any given moment. You know, I like to make fun of Jeff uh, about Jeff Hoffman coming out of the pin, but you know, his, his, performance so far has been pretty good in uh in a role where he can be a, a swing guy a middle innings eater uh i really do like with sims back now people can be uh put in the roles that really were intended for them and can be used in a way for them to find the most success. I think we'll see that with this Reds bullpen as they continue uh, to figure out who their high leverage guys are. I think we have a pretty good idea now of what we are looking for in these players. And uh, I think they're going to actually deliver on it. Uh, outside of the pitching, we'll jump over onto the offensive side for just a minute. I think Nick Senzel is finally getting hot. He was two for three on Sunday against the Cardinals. The day before, he had extra base hit. It really looks like he's starting to see the ball, starting to get his timing, starting to be able to perform, uh, and that's exciting. You know, We've said all along that we need 140 to 150 games from Nick Senzel uh, at a major league performing level or above. You know, If he can come in at an OPS plus of you know 110 and play 140 games. That's a successful season for Nick Senzel. And uh, you know I'm I'm one of his biggest fans. I just I really hope that this is the season that he turns the corner. And and he looked good. He looked good out there. He looked comfortable. Uh, he was interviewed on the the post game show talking about how the team has been dealing with uh, the adversity that it's facing with this crazy losing streak. Uh, but you know, he sounded poised, he sounded confident and he sounded like, uh, he was ready to continue to scrap. And I hope that all of the reds are looking at it that way as well. Uh, we can't talk about, uh, this St. Louis series and their, their big win on Sunday without talking about the hero who is Colin Moran. Yes. The hero Colin Moran picking up two RBIs in the game. Of course, I'm being just a little sarcastic, uh, but it was nice to see him uh, actually execute and, and, and make some things happen. You know, Jeff and I have both kind of bagged on Colin Moran just a little bit, but he's another one of those guys that has been asked to do things uh, that it was never intended for him to do when he was brought in here. And, you know, he's playing against left-handed pitchers. He's playing third base all the time. Hopefully as the, the, the players begin to heal and come back from the injury list, uh, he can be used as a DH and, and spotted in against right-handed pitchers and really find some more success because you know the reds are going to need everybody in order to uh, at least try and remain relevant as the baseball season progresses i've seen a lot of people talking about oh it's only 17 18 games in you can't give up yet and that's true but baseball seasons are won and lost in april you can't have a historically bad april like this and really expect to be considered a playoff contender so uh, there's still a lot of baseball left that is true and hopefully the reds are digging in and finally starting to maybe turn a corner and and figure things out just a little bit uh also of note in the in the st louis series i think that our guy uh, aleo lopez uh, continues to start to figure it out. I really hope that he gets hot. I hope he continues to get opportunities. He was one for three on Sunday. Right now on the season, he's hitting 263, uh, his batting average. And, you know, while he's not knocking the cover off the ball, he's getting hits. Uh, he's playing good defense uh, and he's contributing. So I, I hope his days in Louisville are over. I really don't understand uh, what else the Reds want him to do down there in order to get an extended look at the major league level. Uh, I think the time is now for that. Also, Tommy Pham continues to be hot, continues to hit the ball hard, uh, two for three on Sunday, showing signs of uh, getting his numbers, as he likes to put it, and uh, going on his revenge tour. And, you know, whatever his motivation is, I don't care. The Padres are coming back into town. Obviously, he got hot when the Reds were out in San Diego, and he really started to make good contact and hit the ball and hit for some power. Uh, let's hope that that continues on through the next three-game set with the Padres at Great American Ballpark. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway of the day is it's finally nice to be talking about a W again. Uh, coming up, we are going to check in on the young guns in the Reds rotation, and we're going to discuss that latest uh, start by Hunter Green that did not go so well. Uh, we're going to talk about all that coming up in just a second. 
Thanks for making Locked on Reds your first listen of the day. For your next listen, check out the Locked on Now podcast. Recaps of MLB games with an analysis from all of our local experts. They're taking th fans through the season like no other network. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like Locked on Reds. Make sure you are following the podcast on all of the platforms, including YouTube. Uh, we're going to have lots of video content for you over there. Maybe Jeff's going to have some stuff from the beach. Not sure. Uh, coming up on our next episode, we will get you ready for the Padres series, a three-game set at Great American Ballpark. Uh, coming off a sweep in San Diego, I really hope that uh, the old red legs are fired up and looking for a little bit of uh, revenge all the way around, not just Tommy Pham uh, with those San Diego Padres. You know, one of the things that we've been keeping an eye on and we've talked about since before the season even started is the amount of young pitchers that are going to be in this Reds rotation. Uh, you know, uh, River San Martin, Nicodolo, Hunter Green, all young guys, all rookies, uh, Vladimir Gutierrez on his second year. Uh, but I wanted to take a minute and kind of check in now that we're through three starts with these rookies and just take a look at how they've done and 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 what the the trend is, what direction we think they're going. Obviously, we've already talked a little bit about Nick Lodolo. Uh, got his first major league win on Sunday and that's his third start of the season. His ERA now sits at 5.52. He's got 19 Ks through 14.2 innings pitched and five base on balls. Uh, you know, as I mentioned in the first segment, I think that every time out he's looked better than the time before. And that's really what you need from a rookie pitcher. That's trying to figure it out, trying to learn to pitch at the big league level. Um, as the hitters are adjusting, he needs to be able to adjust. And I think that's what we've seen from him. I think he's really gone out and, and, uh, and really shown us that, uh, he probably needs to stay in the majors. You know, I mentioned this on our last episode with Jeff that I really don't think there's anything else for him to prove or learn down in Louisville. I think that everything that Nick Lodolo needs to continue to progress his career uh, needs to happen working directly with Derek Johnson in Cincinnati at the big league level facing major league hitters. Uh, so far, so good, I think. Um, obviously, we like a little bit better numbers, but um, if he continues trending the way that he's trending, I'm not worried about him at all. Uh, he looks good. He looks healthy. He looks like he's figuring it out. Uh, Another thing we need to talk about, though, is Hunter Green's last start out. You know, on the season, Hunter Green has also made uh, three starts, 5.27 ERA, 16 Ks, and 13.2 innings pitched. Uh, six based on balls he's given up. Uh, in that last outing, though, he only managed to last uh, three and a thirds innings pitch. He gave up four hits, three runs, walked four, and only struck out three. Uh, a big takeaway from that start is his velocity was way down. He didn't top 96, I don't think, uh, in the entire three innings that he pitched. And everybody was worried, is he hurt? Is there a problem? I saw people making comments on social media about, see, look, if he doesn't throw 100, he can't get people out. Well, you know what? He's facing major league hitters. And, you know, the simple fact of the matter is every pitcher doesn't have it every time out. I think that Hunter was a little bit tired. I think that that start in Los Angeles with all of the pomp and circumstance surrounding the honoring of Jackie Robinson for Hunter to be pitching back in L.A. where he's from against the Dodgers with all of his friends and family in attendance. I think that took a lot out of him. And one of the things I talked about before the season started was with these young pitchers that there might be a need to get creative with their workloads and, and what the Reds could do to help minimize that. And, you know, I really think Hunter just needed a little bit more rest between starts, especially coming off of that start. Uh, I still think the best thing the Reds could do is to find a way to get into a six man rotation type of situation where that sixth man doesn't just take a sixth turn in the rotation but swaps in and out with Nick Lodolo and Hunter Green to keep their arms fresh and to keep them from being overtaxed. You can even go a step further and include Reaver San Martin in that and, and really just rotate four young pitchers. Maybe uh, a Graham Ashcraft is your guy or Mike Miner comes back or when Luis Castillo comes off the injured list. There's lots of options to make this happen. And keep those young pitchers' arms healthy. Keep them developing in the right direction and uh, keep their confidence protected. You know, one of the things with these pitchers is you don't want them to go out there and get smacked around a lot. You don't want them uh, to basically just have everything they're chucking up there getting rocked because uh, as the confidence goes, so does the overall performance long term. I want to keep these guys motivated 
motivated and confident. I said the third guy you might include in this conversation is Reaver Martin. And of the three rookies, he has probably had uh, the most difficult time uh, early on. His numbers are the worst of the three. Uh, of course, David Bell did do the uh, opener act with Reaver San Martin, having him follow Luis Sessa. And that was probably one of San Martin's better appearances. But let's talk about it for just a second. His last time out in San Diego, he pitched five and a third innings, gave up five earned runs, striking out four and walking just one. So on the season, that puts him at a 7.11 ERA, 12.2 innings pitched in uh, three games. Two of those started, one of them as uh, following Luis Sessa. Eight strikeouts, six base on balls. So for Reaver San Martin to find success, he has got to cut those walks down. He's got to demonstrate a little bit more control, a little bit more command. Uh, I think that as pitchers come back, Luis Castillo, Mike Miner, Reaver San Martin is probably the first guy to go out of this rotation. Uh, what they do with him, I'm not sure. I don't want to speculate, but I can tell you what I would like to see. Uh, with these young starters, I don't want them dumped into the bullpen. Uh, I want them sent down. I want them to continue to be stretched out, continue to be ready in case the Reds need to bring them back into the rotation. I don't want to see Hunter Green sent down. I don't want to see Nick Lodolo sent down. Uh, but I do want their their load managed so that they can pitch deep into the season. Uh, I don't think we really need to worry about a postseason run. Definitely not something we're going to talk about today, but I do want their arms protected. I want them to continue to develop in the right way. I think the biggest takeaway from looking at these pitchers is it hasn't been great, but there are bright spots. Uh, and the way that they performed isn't unexpected. This is pretty much exactly what we expected them to do as they learn to be big league pitchers. Coming up, we're going to talk about the fact that there is more help on the way in the form of players coming off of the injured list, uh, namely one Jonathan India, the reigning rookie of the year. But before we talk about that, I want to talk to you about Built Bar. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, uh, maybe even a little bit better than a candy bar. Uh, you want to eat healthy. You want to maintain your health goals and your diet goals. And it's difficult. It's hard to give up all the things you love to eat, all of the great snacks that you like to have. Uh, if you're like me and you have a sweet tooth, it's really hard to stay away from the candies and the sweets. And Built Bar helps you do that because Built Bar is covered in 100% real chocolate. It helps you defeat those cravings. It helps you to stay true to what you are trying to accomplish. Built Bar has great health statistics. A uh, baseball podcast right here loves the statistics. Uh, Built Bar, 130 calories, only has four grams of sugar, four net carbs for those that are doing the keto diet, tracking their carbs, and they are jam-packed with 17 grams of protein. They have amazing flavors like Cherries Barcia. They have uh, coconut brownie chunk. They have salted caramel. And they have lots of different products for you to choose from, from the Built Bars to the Puffs that Jeff is always talking about and is very addicted to. Uh, they have other things like protein-infused broth. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, if you want to find out what they have for you to help you with your health and fitness goals, head over to Built.com right now and use the promo code LOCKED15. That promo code is going to get you 15% off your next order of Built Bar. Uh, why wait? Start today. Get healthy. Healthier, make a healthier you at built.com using the promo code locked 15 for 15% 15 off your next order. Make sure you are following us on Twitter. You can follow me at S often Baker. You can follow Jeff if you want to. When he's back, you can follow him at Jeff Carr. That's Jeff with three F's and you can follow the show at locked on reds. Also make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. There's going to be lots of exclusive video content coming over there uh, as we get a little bit deeper into the season. And you're not going to want to miss that. There's going to be times where we're talking with minor leaguers, where we're traveling around between Cincinnati, Dayton, Louisville, I don't know if we're going to get down to Chattanooga, but we might even try to do that. Uh, some non-baseball stuff too. You know, Jeff's very much a foodie and I can almost guarantee you that at some point in time, there's going to be a uh, video footage of him at Frybox. You can almost, you know, make a bet on that. All right. Let's talk a little bit about what is coming up in the form of help for these Cincinnati Reds. More help is coming. Uh, let's start with the pitching side of things. Luis Castillo made a rehab start in Dayton on Sunday. Uh, that rehab start for the Dragons, he went two and a third inning. He threw 48 pitches, uh, gave up two hits, walked three, 
while striking out four, uh, left the game with the bases loaded. Now, you know, you look at the overall statistics and you think, well, that's not lights out. But, you know, I, I would say that you have to look at this like you would look uh, at a pitching performance through the lens of a spring training game. Uh, Luis Castillo is probably uh, not going full go at these minor leaguers. He's more working on things, getting comfortable, getting his motions down, you know, facing live hitters. I think that, uh, you know, looking at it through that lens, he did well. And I think we're probably looking for another one to two rehab starts out of him before we can even think about him being back in Cincinnati, but he's getting closer and uh, he looked comfortable uh, I saw some video of him pitching for the Dragons, and it didn't look like he was having to put in an overly uh, high amount of effort to get the pitches over. So for Luis Castillo, I think is positive development, even if the, the numbers don't say that it's uh, a superior performance. Uh, you know, I'm just happy to see Luis Castillo back on a baseball field and, and putting in the work because the Reds definitely need him to get back into the rotation and help them win some baseball games. Uh, the other guy coming off of the injured list, reigning rookie of the year, Jonathan India, is eligible to return for Tuesday's start of the series against the Padres uh, when he was walking the uh, red carpet at kids' opening day over the weekend. Uh, someone asked him when he was going to be back. Uh, I think one of the kids asked him when he was going to be back, and he told him Tuesday. So uh, we've seen uh, video footage of him running the bases, and, and he was running pretty full go in the, in the video that I saw. So I think that it's probably safe to say that Jonathan India will be activated on Tuesday. It'll be interesting to see exactly what the Reds do to make room for him because I really hope that it's not Aleo Lopez. I hope he sticks around uh, being able to play multiple positions. They did. Uh, they picked up Reynolds uh, as a, a waiver claim from the Mets, another infielder. Uh, they've got Ritter on the, on the roster right now, uh, filling a spot. Maybe he'll be the first one to go. Uh, I really hope that that's the direction that they go versus, you know, sending out a guy that I really think deserves more of an extended opportunity at the major league level uh, for some playing time. You know, there's one other thing I wanted to cover in this third segment before today, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I don't want to spend a whole lot of energy bagging on the Castellanis, pun intended. Uh, but I know you've all seen this thing of the guys in the stadium wearing the bags over their heads saying, sell the team, Bob. Uh, there was an interview out in the outfield two days ago that one of the stadium officials interrupted uh, telling the guys they had to take the bags off of their head. And then on Sunday, uh, there was some guys sitting in the diamond seats behind home plate wearing the bags on their head and a stadium official came over and told them they had to remove them or they had to leave. And, you know, that's caused, and I think deservedly so, a PR backlash and some outrage. And for me, uh, I think there's some free speech implications. And, you know, I, I, I got called out on Twitter for not being a constitutional scholar, and that's fine. I'm not trying to say that I am, but this is what I know. Uh, the taxpayers of Hamilton County paid to build a great American ballpark. And even if it is a lease structure that the Reds are in charge of, which that is the case, uh, being a publicly funded building, uh, I would like to see Hamilton County at the very least admonish Bob Castellini and the Cincinnati Reds for how that was handled. Uh, and I would like to see them pass some legislation to try and prevent it from happening in the future in buildings that were funded by the public to have someone's right to free speech be infringed upon. is, is It's just, it's terrible. And Bob Castellini shouldn't get away with it. Phil Castellini shouldn't get away with it. Wherever the marching orders came from to tell those guys to take the bags off their heads, uh, it needs to be dealt with. And I don't think that the ushers at Great American Ballpark came up with that on their own. I don't think that they unilaterally decided, oh, this is not okay. So I would like for uh, the county commissioners or the Cincinnati City Council, somebody, to force the issue. Make the Castellini's answer for why it was handled the way it was, who made the decision to handle it the way it was, and then ultimately who made the decision to reverse course after the public outrage, because uh, I did see posted that the ushers are no longer going to enforce making people take the bags off of their heads. Uh, you know, Mike Brown had to deal with that for de a decade or more. At Paul Brown Stadium, uh, when the Bengals were in the throes of their losing seasons. So, you know, you got to have thick skin when you're in the sports entertainment business. And clearly, the Castellinis do not have thick skin. Uh, here's hoping that it really is true that they are no longer going to make trouble for people that are trying to express themselves and express their disappointment with how the team is being handled. 
Uh, like I said, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that. I think that that is probably a good place to wrap up this edition of Locked on Reds. That is going to do it for me today. Coming up on the podcast uh, tomorrow, we are going to dig into the series with the San Diego Padres and get you set for that three-game set at Great American Ballpark. Uh, thanks for making Locked on Reds your first listen of the day. Now make a Locked on MLB your second listen. Paul Francis Sullivan, but please call him Sully. Uh, he brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present. Locked on MLB, just like Locked on Reds, is free and available on all platforms. The Reds are still struggling. They got their third win, and I am here for it. And you can count on me to be Locked on Reds every single day, even when Jeff is away. I'll talk to you tomorrow.